transport mechanisms. Materials are constantly exchanged between cells and extracellular fluid using a variety of mechanisms. Before we discuss those mechanisms, we need to clarify a few terms. We need to discuss concentration gradient. A concentration gradient is a difference between one area and another. So for example, if someone walks into the room carrying a pizza, the person nearest to the pizza would probably be the first to notice. The reason for this is that there is a very high concentration of pizza particles, all the chemicals that make up pizzas, right where the pizza is. And as they leave the solid state, some of them become airborne. They get buffeted about and moved about randomly because they have collisions with air particles. And they move from an area where they're in very high concentration at the pizza to areas of lower concentration where they are not present and the person nearest would first detect those particles and eventually if this was a closed room those particles would be evenly scattered about and we would have something called equilibrium. Now from this example you can see that you don't need a cell membrane for this type of particle movement to occur but it does also occur across membranes and so if you have a material that's in high concentration on one side of the membrane and if the membrane is permeable to that material, it will move from where it's in higher concentration to where it's in lower concentration. And this occurs just due to the laws of nature. These particles are moving around because they have energy and they're constantly bumping into other particles and eventually what will happen is they will spread out evenly. So if you have a lot of particles in one area and few particles in the other area, you have a concentration gradient. But as those particles begin to spread evenly, we say that the concentration gradient is diminished. Okay, now we're ready to talk about the different transport mechanisms. So the transport mechanisms we're going to take a look at fall into two general categories. Passive transport mechanisms, which move down a concentration gradient and require no added energy. And active transport mechanisms, which move materials up or against a concentration gradient. In other words, from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration, and this requires energy. Let's talk about the passive transport mechanisms first. There are two kinds, either the kind that requires a carrier molecule in the membrane or the kind that requires no carrier molecule in the membrane. Of the kinds that require no carrier molecule, the simplest form is diffusion and it is the movement of any molecule. When we talk about the movement of water, that is the movement of water down its concentration gradient from where there's a lot of water to where there's less water, we call that osmosis. Both of these can occur outside of living systems. Diffusion can occur with or without a membrane. Osmosis requires a membrane, but it can be a semi-permeable membrane as opposed to the selectively permeable membranes we would see in living cells. Carrier molecules, on the other hand, are only present in selectively permeable membranes and therefore only present in living cells. And if the carrier molecule is sort of speeding up the rate at which diffusion would otherwise take place, this is called facilitated diffusion. As far as the active mechanisms go, again, you can have active mechanisms that require no carrier molecule or that require a carrier molecule. The two types that require a carrier molecule are called endocytosis and exocytosis, and there are two types of endocytosis, phagocytosis and pinocytosis. The kind of active transport that requires a carrier molecule I know this is going to sound confusing, but the, the name of this type of active transport is, are you ready for this? Active transport. Okay, so we've got two major categories of transport mechanisms, the kind that require energy, active transport, the kind that don't require energy, passive transport, and we can see that in both cases you can have a carrier molecule, but it's not necessary, it just depends on which specific mechanism we're talking about. An analogy to passive transport would be like water flowing naturally into a boat, maybe a boat that has a leak, and uh, that's just sort of the natural way that it would flow. It's flowing from where there's a lot of it to where there's not much of it. As far as active transport goes, it would be the equivalent of bailing the boat out of water. Yes, the water has a natural tendency to move in, but you're actually moving against that natural tendency by trying to bail the water out of the boat. So you're moving the water from where there is not much of it to where there's an awful lot of it.